What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Once again, another Still Worth It video, and this time another Android device, but on top of that, one of my favorite Android lines, and I feel like that's such like a generic corny thing to say because it's one of the most popular phones out there, phone lines. That specific phone line is the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, or the specific phone for that matter, and I've always loved the S8 and the S8 Plus a lot, even since its release. I feel like it brought a lot to the table, but I also feel like I say that for every phone that I review, but this one was no doubt you know one of the biggest pushes that Samsung really pushed for their S series devices. I think the last time we saw a push like this was probably the S6 but the S8 and S8 Plus both are really great phones and I reviewed the Galaxy S8 earlier this year or like a couple weeks ago and I figured the S8 Plus is right up the alley so I might as well review it now and this phone came out in March of 2017 so it'll actually be turning three years old this year and it's so crazy to think that this phone will be turning three years old I mean it just time is just flying by like before we know it it's going to be like 2025 and I'm going to be reviewing the Galaxy S26 and it's going to be weird stuff and it's like and we're still going to be doing swides on these phones too but Looking on the front, we can see a 6.2 inch Super AMOLED display. This is 1440p and dude, I don't even have to say it, it's still a very good panel. It was a great panel when it was released and it's still a very good panel. I feel like the biggest improvements that we've seen since this panel's release was probably software. We've seen things like True Tone and even the S10. It has a 1440p display and I think the software is what enhances that experience. So if you were to give me like an S10 display and an S8 Plus display, I might be able to tell a little bit of a difference just because I've been using those phones for the you know, majority of time. But if you're an average person, you're not really going to notice that big of a difference. The S8 Plus's display obviously is one of its biggest advantages. However, you can definitely tell we have a little bit of bezel on the top and bottom, but this was a big push that Samsung was pushing at the time. You know, with the S8 and S8 Plus, they wanted to remove most of that bezel and they did a really good job. It's symmetrical, it looks really good, and yeah, if you're looking at the S10 or the OnePlus 7T Pro or whatever, like yeah, you'll probably tell some differences. It doesn't look as great as those phones, but the S8 Plus still looks tremendous and I like this symmetricalness of this if that's even a word if you look at a phone like a pixel 3 xl it has that notch but also that bottom bezel it's just not symmetrical and that's why i really like this design it's symmetrical across the board and i really do like that about this phone on the bottom you can see a usb type c port as well as a headphone jack which is really cool we have that capability on this phone still we still have it on the s10 too but like this was the time where, you know, a lot of phone manufacturers were removing the headphone jack. Apple did it, you know, just the version of phones before this one. And, and I really do like how this phone has both the USB Type-C port and the headphone jack. On the back, you can see a single camera setup as well as the fingerprint sensor and probably the worst location ever. I still question why they put it there, but they, you know, moved it eventually with the S9. A glass back on the back as well. And overall, like I've stated, this phone feels super premium. There's really not too much to hate on it. There is IP68 dust or water resistance, which is really cool. You can go up to one and a half meters of water for 30 minutes. So that's an awesome little thing. As well as a micro SD card slot. This phone has both of those capabilities, you know, of having water certification on that and a micro SD card slot. That is awesome. So really in terms of the outside, that is really pretty much it. There's nothing too crazy going on with it that we don't already have now, but that's also a really good thing. There's a lot of similarities between this device and the newest devices that are still being released. So that pretty much covers it up in terms of the outside. Now hitting on the software, this thing was released with Android Nougat, which is 7.0. We are able to upgrade it to Android Pie, which is on, you know, One UI, if you guys don't know. And that is probably the saddest thing about this phone. It didn't get One UI 2, which honestly was expected. I was like 50-50 on it, but this phone, with its sheer power and resemblance to the Galaxy S9, the Galaxy S9 is getting One UI 2.0. If it already hasn't gotten it yet, it still hasn't gotten it for some reason. At least the official build hopefully will be coming out soon so I can review those. But this phone could have handled it and I don't know why they didn't do it. They could have easily, you know, upened their amount of software support for these phones. They haven't fixed it yet. Hopefully they will at some point. But this phone is not getting One UI 2.0, which is really sad. But it can definitely handle it. But in terms of software on Android Pie, it's still pretty capable. It still should be getting security updates as well. So it's, you're not, you know, it's not all a horrible thing. But in terms of a full OS, it's not getting it. It. But luckily for you, there was quite a bit of a development community behind the Samsung Galaxy S8 as well as the S8 Plus, so there are some ROMs available for this thing. And best believe when One UI 2.0 officially comes out to a lot of devices, there's going to be ports over to the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. I don't know how stable those things are going to be. That's why I always prefer having the full, you know, stock OS supporter like Samsung pushing these updates over. But I guess you know that it is what it is. So in terms of software, you are kind of outdated, not really until the official 
when UI 2.0 comes out for all those devices and when the security updates are done for this thing. But you can always go and root this thing and custom ROM it. There's a huge community out there, or a bigger community behind it. So you can easily go and do that if you hard desire. So in terms of software, you're not really outdated yet, but you will be within the next year. And you can always go custom ROM it if you need to be. So that pretty much covers it up in terms of the software. Now hitting on the performance side of things. So this thing had the Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 chipset, an octa-core CPU, a Dendrino 5. 40 GPU, and there were two different models of the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, a 64 and 128 gigabyte variant. Now this is important. The base model, the 64 gigabyte model, had 4 gigabytes of RAM, where the top tier 128 gigabyte model had 6 gigabytes of RAM. So a little bit more RAM on that top tier model. And it's crazy because if you look at phones now, usually 6 gigabytes of RAM is like the base model for even the budget phones. You look at a phone like a Samsung Galaxy S10e, that specific phone only had 6 gigabytes of RAM at the base model. Model, whereas the Samsung Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus, you know, had more. So it's kind of cool how times have turned and, you know, we're getting more and more RAM and more and more performance with cheaper the prices. So, but this thing does have a micro SD card slot. So don't let the storage be a deterrent. Just, you know, figure out if you want more RAM or less RAM or if you need more RAM or less RAM. So in terms of performance, what I can tell you, it's not a bad performing device. You know, I don't know how many times I have to say this. It's a very, very good performing device for being a 2017 phone in 2020. It's not getting software support really anymore, so it's pretty cool to see that this phone is still very, very capable of handling a lot of apps that I throw at it. And it's not a slow phone. It wasn't a slow phone its release, and it's still not a slow phone. And even in today's standards, if this phone was released now, I probably, you know, would believe it's not a bad performing phone, as long as I'm not comparing it to another phone. If I were to compare this to my Samsung Galaxy S10 or S10 Plus or something, yeah, I'd probably be noticing some differences. But in terms of me, you know, using it from a daily perspective, if I'm opening apps, closing apps, going through one thing to another, it's a smooth experience. It's not a slow one. Yeah, over time, it'll probably get slower and, you know, Things like One UI and all those background processes do tend to slow down the phone more than help it, but I don't think it's a slow phone. It's a very, very good performing phone for being a 2017 phone in 2020. Gaming, everything is going to be fine. So if you're stuck in a thing where you're like, oh, I'm afraid it's not going to be like the latest and greatest, whatever. Yeah, obviously it's not going to be the latest and greatest. Go get an S10 or wait for the S20 to come out. Like that's probably the best way to go. But but if you want a phone that's kind of like a budget phone and feels like a thousand dollar phone still, this is a really good performing phone for that matter. Matter. So in terms of performance, I hope that kind of covers it. Hopefully you guys understand that. Now hitting on the camera, this thing has a single 12 megapixel camera on the back. You do have an optical image stabilization on it and you can shoot 4K videos on it too. So that's really, really good. That front camera is eight megapixels and you can shoot 1440p videos on that as well. Now hitting on that back facing camera, I think overall it's a pretty good camera still. Actually, it's pretty great. I really don't see anything to hate on it in terms of the quality and the video quality. It seems to be doing just fine. 4k at 60 would have been really cool but this was released in 2017 so it's not that big of a deal in terms of the quality and even just the software features of this phone it's not bad samsung really does pack a lot into that camera app that has really you know held its time even in 2020 three years later but the biggest disadvantage of this phone that i've really hit on a lot of older iphones and and older Androids in general are the lack of hardware features in the camera. So we don't have a telephoto lens, we don't have an ultra wide sensor. So even if the quality is fine, a lot of these older phones that we have that are you know being reviewed now in 2020, they're not really holding up that well in the camera department because of those new hardware features that we have. So that's a really, really important thing to note. But at the same time, yeah, it's lacking those things like a telephoto lens and ultra wide sensor and things, but the quality of the photo is still there. So it's really up to you, do those things really matter? If not, then this camera is really great. If it does, then you know you would be future proofing yourself by getting like an S9 Plus with a dual camera setup. So that kind of covers it up in terms of the camera department. Now, ending it off with the battery life, this thing had a respectable 3,500 milliamp hour battery. You do have wireless charging too, but the battery life and battery size of this thing is actually really, really good for the size of this phone. It's a pretty big phone, it has a pretty big screen, and it's a pretty powerful phone at that. And the battery life on this thing is actually not that bad, but like I've stated with all these older phones batteries do degrade over time and one thing that i've noticed is that samsung devices usually degrade more than a lot of my you know iphones or other devices like that 
which I don't know what to elude that on. I mean, maybe it's a software and a lot of the background processes, but I don't know. I treat all my phones the same, and it seems like the Samsung Galaxy S series devices take the biggest hit on battery health. But if you take care of your battery and everything, let's say this thing was at its full 3,500 million hours, you can easily get through a day easily. Like, it's not going to be that. Obviously, it depends what you do with it, but I think the battery life is really good. But like I said, make sure you take care of the battery. All my Samsung Galaxy S devices, they tend to wear down more often than a lot of my other devices. So some other things I wanted to hit on, actually, I want to talk about getting this phone used. So a lot of these used devices, for some reason, have a lot of burn-in. And it's not just this device. It's a lot of my, you know, just all my Samsung Galaxy S series devices tend to have a lot of burn-in, even my notes. And take that as you will, but that's one thing to kind of keep in mind. I want to start addressing that more often because the more, more I'm a consumer, I get, I pay for these phones just like you're going to pay for them. And I hate buying a phone that has a lot of burn-in, but those tend to be the best deals. So kind of take it as you will. The screen is great, but Samsung Galaxy S series devices and no series devices tend to burn in a lot quicker than a lot of iPhones that I've owned too for the same amount of period. So take that as you will. Not a crazy thing, but a one thing I wanted to hit on. So is the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus still worth it in 2020? I think 100% yes, this phone is still a killer device. You're getting amazing build quality and amazing screen, pretty good performance, software security updates for a little bit longer, the headphone jack with USB Type-C, which is awesome, a very good camera quality, a bit of development support behind it, IP certification, like there's really not too much to hate on this phone. There's only two things that I can think of, the lack of software updates going on in the future, and maybe the little bit of camera quality, you know, with the lack of camera features. That's the only thing, but the quality is really good. So I think the SA Plus is still a very good device and probably one of the best used priced phones out there, like the cheapest, best priced one that I can think of. <laughs> if you want to pick up the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus, the cheapest one would probably go through eBay. You know, there's a lot of people selling them there for pretty cheap, but I will link the cheapest one I find on Amazon and link it down below so you guys can get it from there and help support the channel at the same time. But that is pretty much it. If you guys have any other questions or anything, leave it down in the comment section as well. Hit that like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count, so it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my second channel all those things are linked down below i really appreciate it if you guys could check it out but more importantly than everything else i love every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out to them